welcome. I am the Reverend Nan Adams, pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church here in Montgomery, Alabama, and we're delighted that you have joined with us. If you are here, it's very chilly, which is very unusual for Montgomery. So we're hoping that you, wherever you are, you're nice and warm. We are joined in worship today by Beth Nicholson, our director of music, by Lauren Monte, our accompanist, and by our liturgist, Kathy Sweezy. Happy Easter. He is risen. So glad all of that, that we made it through this far into this year with not needing too much of a, a heater. <laughs> we don't think our furnace is going to make it through any more cold spells, so we're glad that we're not too cold today, but we're working on how we're going to take care of that furnace problem as the days come on. But we're hoping we're just going to go right into summer tomorrow, aren't we? I think so. Prayer concerns today. Of course, we're keeping Betty Lewis and her family in prayer. Tomorrow we will go to the funeral home in order to plan the service, so it has not been planned. But Chuck passed away on Good Friday at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Please keep that whole family in your prayers as they gather from around the country. I just received word that Kathy Klaus has had a, a little bit of a hiccup in her recovery. She had to have an NG tube put in to remove fluids. So she is still in ICU. If you would continue to pray for Kathy and, the, and those who are caring for her this day. Are there any other announcements? Any other joys and concerns? Yes. Okay, great. Any other announcements, joys, concerns to share with each other this day? Then let us worship God.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. This is the day the Lord has made.
without your astonishing appearance to our ancestors and your stunning presence throughout the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us and transform us, that in every way our work and prayer will make whole what is broken and give peace on earth. Christ, we pray. Amen. To all and to each, on this community and on his friends, where regret is real, Jesus pronounces his pardon and grants us the right to always begin anew. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Are three things to know about Easter. God has proven the most powerful being in the universe. On Friday, the bad guys thought they had won. They had killed Jesus and sealed him into a tomb, a guarded tomb. And on Easter, Jesus totally surprised them, blasted out of that tomb, proving that God and God's ways are always, always the most powerful force in the universe. It is the ultimate good guys beat the bad guys story. If you, as a young person, are young at heart, know yourself to not be very powerful, yet long to be more so, stand up with God. And there's nothing more powerful than you and God together. Number two, in the story of Easter, we learn that God promises to be with us now always, even after we die, and know especially that anyone we love who is also with God now, right now, even after they die, we will all be safe with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It's simply the way things are. And number three, 
the third Easter message is that Jesus forgives us for all the wrong things we've ever done, especially so if we ask God. And how do we know this? Because Jesus forgave even everyone included in killing him on the cross. And Jesus promised to forgive us too. That also is simply the way things are. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, help us to remember these incredibly important three things of your love, your forgiveness, and your presence with us now and always. Amen. Okay, we can go home now. Oh, just kidding. <laughs>
Our second lesson today comes from the book of Matthew, reading at the end of 27 to the first 10 chapters of verse of chapter 28. Let us listen together for the word of the Lord. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the woman left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They, there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Make it as secure as you can. Pilate tells the chief priests and Pharisees who have come to enlist his help. The public execution of Jesus had taken place the day before. His disciples scattered and were nowhere to be seen. But still, these religious officials worry. On Saturday morning, they decide to worry Pilate. They ask Pilate to command the tomb to be secure, a, a strange request, <laughs> a tomb being what it is and death being what it is. But they are worried, remembering what Jesus had said about rising after three days. So the government must step in and make the tomb full of death even more secure. Pilate thought he was rid of this Jesus problem, rustic, troublesome preacher, and these scheming, better-than-thou-art religious leaders. He, he washed his hands of the whole matter, remember, when the crowds demanded Barabbas to be freed and Jesus killed. So it wouldn't be pushing the text too far to imagine that Pilate stands with clenched teeth and more irony than he could possibly imagine and spits out, we have a guard of soldiers, go make it as secure as you can. Well, in the gospel stories, Pilate is often the one who speaks truths he does not fully understand. And maybe that's what's happening here. Make it as secure as you can, Pilate says. Well, and those words should unsettle us. Particularly to North American readers in this year of 2023, Security, after all, is a big deal. It's an enormous deal. 
several tens of billions of dollars worth of deal with our U.S. Office of Homeland Security and its unprecedented powers to observe and check on all of its citizens still, even to this day. Now, such dramatic shifts in our culture are still hotly debated. Why did some, though there has developed a sense of inevitability as the years have unfolded after 9-11, with so many soft bombings, soft targets, you know, the ones that aren't supposed to be hit, the ones that are full of civilians. With bumper stickers, often, well, they often encapsulate our cultural climate in a snap, and lately my favorite is, oh well, I wasn't using my civil liberties anyway. In the name of security. In the name of security, we double bolt our doors at home, install alarm systems in our churches, create gated living communities, hire law officers to walk the halls of schools. Every major cultural gathering since 9-11, indeed, be it the Super Bowl or the Academy Awards or the Masters, we no longer just get commentary on the event, but we're also informed that snipers have been deployed on roofs of nearby buildings and under cover in nearby trees as a security measure. And today, we're just barely coming out of COVID, and who would have thought we would have lived the way we did the last three years? But now what do we have? We have these things called fungal pneumonias coming about. It just seems we can't be secure enough. Now we've learned to live with this heightened security. We heed the warnings and yes, indeed, we, some of us mask when we're not feeling well, when we go into a large crowd where we have to be close together. Some of us all in the name of security. And, and there's nothing wrong with this desire, either to be healthy or to have security. It's one of our most cherished human desires to feel safe, to be safe, to protect, especially those we love from things that would harm them. So we should be unsettled when we hear the sarcasm in Pilate's taunt. Well, go ahead and make it as secure as you can. And Matthew's story doesn't get us any more comfort. The tomb is not in a garden full of lilies and chicks and tulips. The tomb is apparently on something like the San Andreas Fault, startling us awake and trembling. When women come to the tomb on the very first Easter morning, the day is not dawning with a faint glow in the eastern sky, rich light growing and splashing all the rocks and trees with golden hues. No, the earth begins to shake and tremble. The lightning flashes as God's kingdom erupts through all that seems so fixed and immovable. Reality itself cracks wide open when God's truth of the resurrection of Jesus is revealed. Now the angel effortlessly rolls back the stone, you know, that big tone, stones that's sealing the tomb, surrounded by all the security the mightiest military power in the world at that time can muster. And the angel shows the women nothing. That's right, nothing. There's nothing there anymore. And the angel admits as much. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. There's nothing to show the women. All the angel can do is proclaim the truth. He is not here. He has been raised. Now come the reactions to this incredible revelation. The text tells us that the guards are paralyzed with fear, completely unable to respond as if they were dead. The women too begin their reaction in fear but something about their fear is different. Somehow they are able to hear the words of the angel, do not be afraid. And immediately their fear moves from that of terror to that of amazement. 
awe, wonder. Somehow their fear gets them moving even, heading somewhere with a mission. And the angel told them, go, go tell the disciples. Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. With fear and great joy, they ran to tell the disciples. They move forward. They trust the angel's promise. The angel came bearing a message of hope, and now they have a message of hope to tell the disciples. And they may be afraid, of course, but in spite of their fear, or even in the very midst of their fear, they have a promise. And they have a message. And that is enough to send them on their way. on their way and perhaps it's always happening when we're on our way going with great fear and trepidation what happens they meet Jesus yes Jesus met them and they met Jesus then, Matthew says, the women came to him, took hold of a steed, and worshipped him. We almost miss that detail because it's, well, it seems rather commonplace. It seems so ordinary on this Easter morning filled with extraordinary happenings like earthquakes and angels. But do you see how fitting that sounds? When they grab hold of his feet, that means they have bowed down. They have worshipped. They are there to worship the Lord. And what is it to worship? Archbishop of Canterbury, William Temple, wrote a wonderful description of worship. He wrote, Worship is the quickening of conscience by God's holiness, the nourishment of the mind with God's truth, the opening of the heart to God's love, the surrender of the will to God's purpose, and all of this gathered up in adoration, the most selfless emotion of which humans are capable. Do you see that worship has absolutely nothing to do with our worldly concern for safety, security? Because security, real security, is not something we can build or create for ourselves, not something we can achieve. Instead, security is the gift of God, something we are given and can only receive. Make it as secure as you can, Pilate taunts. That is precisely what worship does not do and cannot do and has no desire to do. The one who shakes the earth with the truth of the resurrection is the one in whom we find our real security. Joan Chittister is a Catholic nun and a world-renowned theologian and author. And she tells a story she calls one of her driving spiritual stories. It comes from Eastern Christian wisdom literature, and it tells the story about a Chinese warlord, one who was rampaging through the mountains in the most brutal, horrendous way. And as the word spread up the mountains of his coming, people simply began to abandon, just abandon their villages, their livestock, everything, just flee. Finally, when the warlord got to the village at the top of the mountain, he said to his first in command, the village is empty, I presume. And Lieutenant said, ah, uh, yes, Lord, everybody is, well, no, not everybody is gone. There's an old monastic here who simply refuses to leave. So they dragged the old monastic out and threw the old monastic at the feet of the warlord. And the warlord looked down and screamed, Do you know who I am? I am he who can run you through with a sword and never even bat an eye. And the old monastic lifted her head, looked into his eyes and said, And do you know who I am, sir? I am she who can let you run me through with your sword and never bat an eye. That's Security, my friends. That's resurrection faith. 
the angel gives us a message to share with each other. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There, there you will see him. This is the good news of Easter Day. Don't look back in the tomb. It's, it's empty. Not, nothing's there. He's been raised and he goes on ahead of you. Always, ever beckoning us to follow his lead. And your fears and great joy alike, you will recognize Jesus as you move on. As you go on your way. As you take the message of hope to others. And you know, you will recognize Jesus when you're on your way. Even better, Jesus will recognize you. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed, those who are able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. People shall come from east and west and north and south, all to partake of this incredible feast that was prepared for you and for me and for all of creation. This is not our table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the Lord's table. And our Savior invites anyone who even wishes to understand the tiniest bit about this kind of faith to come and partake of this feast, that it might indeed Bring that to life in your heart. Please join with me in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator of the universe. You made us from the dust of the earth breathed into us the breath of life, and set us in your world to love you. We rejected your love, your peace. We chose to live in enmity with one another rather than peace with you and all creation. But you did not reject us, and you called us back to you over and over again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks for Jesus at whose birth the angels sang of the coming reign of peace on earth. The Jesus who fed the hungry, who humbled the mighty, and proclaimed the good news. With thanks and praise, we offer ourselves to you, sharing this holy meal, remembering Christ dying and rising, and praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. This bread, this cup, this people, Christ's body and blood, as you make us one in the Spirit, grant us the strength and wisdom to seek peace and your way in the world. Keep us in the peace of Christ until you gather us at your table in glory. 
Guide us, O loving one, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Hear us now as we offer the prayer Christ taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take it, eat of it, and when you do, remember me. And after supper, he took the cup. He said, this is a new cup. My covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins for all time. Take it and drink of it. And when you do, remember me. For every time we take this bread and eat it, and every time we take this cup and sip it, we indeed are proclaiming the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. The gifts of, people, of God for the people of God. Amen. I now ask the elders to come forth to prepare the elements for all. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we scarce can believe the depths you have been to in order that we may know your love, your grace, your kindness, your creation, your imagination. Grant us a small piece of your wisdom 
and enough strength to last in this life and in the life to come, both through the, the lows and the highs. We ask this in the name of your dear son, the one who came, the one who died, the one who rose again, and the one who indeed reigns even now. In his name, amen. Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of that very spirit be with you this day and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.